Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle channel. Sorry it's been a while since I put out a video. It's been a combination of illness and the usual seasonal madness. This video will be the much requested update on the Elite Light frame set. This video has been much delayed for various reasons, but mostly it's because it kept getting more complicated. So this will be a look at a few of the key areas and then I'll post further updates rather than trying to do all of this in just one video. Um, for people that are not aware, Elik is a light electric vehicle company based in Ukraine and it produces high quality bikes and frames at very reasonable prices. They're currently managing to do this and continue to do this in the face of a Russian invasion and it's near constant resulting electrical cuts and air raids and it's impressive and I think a testament to the will and determination of the Ukrainian people. For our part High Voltage, we're trying to support them by helping our community members get hold of an Elite frame and to build useful and fun to ride light electric vehicles with them. If you're wondering um, about the hat, it gets, uh, it gets pretty cold in the basement here and I don't run any electrical heat down here unless I have the 3D printers going. Um, also, my kids have been banging on at me for ages to do, do some merch because apparently dad, everybody, every YouTuber has to have merch. So um, yeah, it's a bit of fun really. And if you want, you can order a hat and I'm gonna look at what else I can come up with. Uh, I also have this uh, steel mug that I did and hopefully it will stop me breaking the ceramic ones from the kitchen. So back to the, back to the light frame. And uh, I think there must be at least, I don't know, Half a dozen builds going on on the Discord community right now using this particular frame set, and there's also a bunch more in the uh, in the planning phases. And consequently, as a result, there are lots of uh, there are lots of things and different ideas that people are are doing with this frame. Um, various components are being designed and produced, and there are also various batteries that are being developed um, to make the best use of the of the space available. Um, the bike that you can see here right now is Monty's build with the, the BBSHD. Um, but there are also a few others being made with the lightning rods motors as well. This bike is actually almost ready for its first ride with the battery being delivered in the last few days. And there are some really, really neat touches to this build, um, particularly like uh, the way the charge ports for 12 volt and 72 volts have been incorporated into the seat structure on, on this build. Um, in terms of the the bike that I want to build, um, things have changed quite a lot over the last few months, mainly because I've realized that I can use this process to build this bike to help me test parts and concepts as I design my own frame. Essentially, what I want to do is create my ideal light electric vehicle for use in cities and suburbs. I mean, it's probably gonna be fine for trails and you know a bit of light off-road, but that's not really the main focus of it. Uh, I wanna build it in a way that has a good chance of satisfying the kind of person making regulations, like an organizational person that would say that this vehicle is safe for its intended use. Large amounts of bicycle components probably won't cut it. So, Rather than use fat bike wheels, I'm going to build the wheels that I would look to use on my own design frame and test them with this frame first. It's going to take me time to get my frame designed where I want it, so it makes sense to me to, to work on individual components in this build first. Um, bicycle stuff I'm finding is also insanely expensive to get anything strong enough to handle the abuse. Like fat bike wheels are hard to come by anyway, and things like a rear hub can be you know up to three hundred dollars for something for something strong and uh, i'll illustrate the the conundrum i have with the wheel with with this one that i made earlier in the year if you look at this wheel you can see the difficulties that i found getting the rear wheel that i want it has an aluminum motorcycle rim which cost me like ninety dollars and is way stronger and much cheaper than its bicycle equivalent but to get this to work um, with the hub that I have here, I have to use 11 gauge spokes 
and reducer spoke nipples, uh, which will fit both the rim and the hub. And forget the fact that Holmes Hobbies don't sell these anymore. Uh, it's not really what I want to do. What I want is to have a motorcycle rim with a reasonably light spoke, but that will still fit with the standard motorcycle spoke nipples. To make this possible, I need to have control over the design of the hub. And I've spent ages trawling the net, looking at different options. Um, and I've come to the conclusion that making a hub won't be cheap, but it's not going to be any more expensive than trying to shoehorn in a component that's not really intended to go there. The closest thing I've actually found so far is the, is the Sir Ron hub. And this actually fits almost perfectly with the non-fat version of the light frame. It has 135 mil dropouts and the width of this with the bushings is 134 millimeters. So a one mil spacer is going to be, it's going to be pretty easy to fill that gap. Um, the dropouts on the fat swing arm are 184 millimeters though. Um, so spacing out that kind of hub is not really going to be an option. My design for a frame has various widths of dropout depending on the size of the motor. And I think they vary from 160 millimeters up to 220. So I wanna be able to manufacture this hub in a way that makes this variation as easy as possible to manage. Ages ago, I had this idea for a modular rear hub and I've been revisiting the design quite a lot to refine it. The one that you can see here is a three-part design. The central core with flanges for the spokes would be one unit. Either side would be bolt-on parts which contain the wheel bearings as well as a mounting pattern for the uh, for the sprocket or the disc brake if it was to be uh, if it was to be used. Uh, a more complicated version of this would see two additional parts in the spoke flanges being separate for a total of five parts. Um, the advantage for this would be that you could use a different flange to get you 32 or 36 spoke holes and this makes a wider range of rims viable. The manufacturing as well potentially gets cheaper as it could be made on a less complex machine. And I'm suspecting that there's going to be a fine balance to be had between manufacturing costs, complexity and the versatility of the design. Uh, I'm going to do a much more in-depth video on this hub design in, in the near future. Where a good deal of the chat is going on right now is in terms of batteries for this frame. And Rio and Joe are working on some options for people. Both are looking at the 21700 and the 18650 cell sizes and pretty much how much can we squeeze into this frame. So the photos here on the left is Joe's 4P configuration using the, uh, the Molly cell batteries. And that's gonna be powering Monty's build that you saw earlier in the video. And on the right is Rio's pack and that is a 5P configuration of VT6 cells. And that's going off to Mike for use with one of the lightning rods builds. I actually made this uh, this box ages ago now and it pretty much gives the uh, the maximum dimensions that would be realistic um, to fit a battery into this and still give you room for all the for all the bolts and other various parts um, and components. It's actually uh, quite a tight space to fit to fit in this. Um, it looks it looks like it's a pretty big space from the outside, um, but in reality, it's a little bit awkward for getting cell groupings in, which is why Rio went for the one grouping down on the side of the pack. Um, the pouch cell style doesn't seem like we can get that to fit in, um, which is a shame because you can get some really good performance out of those kind of cells, and it's actually considerably easier to make a battery with them. Um, Another option um, is to extend um, the bottom of this, um, so sort of just sort of build out a small extension plate for this. And we've sent off some to get quotes on manufacture. And unfortunately, it's horrendously expensive um, to get anything cut and made in, in North America, which is why I'm, I'm trying to get my own CNC operation up and running, because I'd like to be able to make some of this stuff and make it available without costing the earth for people. Um, but actually, I think I can do this with um, with the large format 3D printer. So I'm working on a design that's gonna extend this just slightly to the point where we can comfortably get 
a 5p configuration of the molly cell in with the bms without doing any anything like putting the bms on on the outside which js did quite successfully with his build but that's not really something that you could safely send in the mail to somebody um, and have them install on a bike so that's not much good to people like uh, like rio and joe the main concern i have would be um like the weight of the battery like when it's um when it's in its, its position would be pushing down on the 3d printed part unless the battery is secured into the frame so i think we'll look at a combination of securing the battery firmly in here and then there's not going to be weight on the cover itself and it can just be it can just be a cover in place there another area that i'm looking at is this um is this area in the uh in the seat or between the seat structure here and the rest of the bike and i've already had the one request to uh to come up with some kind of a kid seat um so i thought it would be neat as well as doing that to have like a compartment in here for for tools and such um but there's there's quite a few things that i would like to try to utilize this space to enable people to, you know, to, whether it's carrying some cargo or, or some some bags or some racks or some, something um, to use this space here between the front of the bike and the back. Uh, Chris on Discord has got a really cool um, sort of one-stop shop for row legal. So uh, basically a box that has various wires that come in and out with, with high goes that let you plug in a battery source and then everything from the rear of the bike, like the indicators, the uh, the brake lights, as well as everything from the front of the bike, from, you know, horns. So all you do is you you put everything in the bike, you plug it all in. And I thought it'd be kind of neat to uh, incorporate that box as part of um, a structure that, that fits on here um, and keep all the wiring, keep all the wiring nice and tidy. Um, another option is that there could be, you know, a, a 12 volt battery up here for, for powering that kind of a system so you're not draining um, the main battery down here. So that's it for this video. And uh, there will be lots and lots more on this bike as I'm starting to get a bit more time again to, to make some videos. So there'll be something on the hub design and some more on the different projects on this coming up pretty soon. Hopefully an update on the CNC milling table as well, because quite a lot of the parts that I'm dreaming up will require some form of metal fabrication. Um, hopefully get that done over Christmas. So wishing everybody that follows the channel and everybody on Discord um, a Merry Christmas if you celebrate it, um, but definitely uh, a happy holiday season. And I should be around quite a bit over Christmas, so I'll look forward to chat to you guys on discord thanks very much for watching the channel uh, really appreciate it and i'll see you all soon cheers